ever since 2014, you have an article similar to this making the rounds every year. It's like clockwork. Uh, at first, it started with robots. It was like a theoretical thing that feminists were worried about that uh, once robots uh, become a thing, uh, men are going to become more misogynistic and, and how they're going to mistreat the robots. Uh, now it's more of a concrete thing because you do have AI chatbots. Um, you can make them with ChatGPT and there's other websites which provide them. And, and it's the same argument. Um well, actually, it's not, it's not just one argument. It's a series of concern, right? Uh, the first concern that I hear is that it will replace women. Obviously, not all women think this because, uh, believe it or not, most women are level-headed individuals capable of rational thought. But, but, but you do have the others that, that genuinely believe that text on a screen is able to replace a relationship with another human being. And in this case, I, I got to ask, uh, it's like, do you not believe you can offer to someone something more than text on a screen? I mean, I mean you know, like, like, if you're in the position where you feel threatened by text on a screen, then maybe you should do a little bit of introspective. I don't know what else to say. Another point of concern is that it dehumanizes women. It, it, it teaches men to be misogynistic. Uh, this happened back in the day when... I think like some museum had a version of a sex bot and men mistreated it and they thought, oh, well, if men mistreat this piece of plastic, then surely they're going to mistreat a woman that is flesh and blood. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the dildo has already been invented, right? Isn't that a little bit dehumanizing? Uh, like, you don't even care about the man as a whole anymore, you know, at least when men buy something and they buy, like, a blow-up doll or, you know, like, it's, it's, like, a representative of the whole package, right? But but the deal is, like, it's so dehumanizing, it's just the body part that you're taking. And, and, and uh, you know, do they not break? Do they not get damaged? Should I be worried about my own pee-pee? It, it, it's such childish arguments. That, that that are the most bizarre takes that I can ever hear. Like, so far, I haven't heard a single man, and I don't think I will ever hear a single man that is concerned over the fact that he's not going to get the relationship ever because women have access to dildos. You know, it, it's literally in that level of childishness. And if a man says something like this, I do think that he should be called out. So I don't understand why when we get to see articles like this, grace our computer screen, why we don't call them out for the ridiculousness that they are. So these are the concerns that I guess uh, are, are coming from the left. But there, there, there's another type of concern, uh, which I also noticed, um, and, and this is becoming more and more of a trend, which is for certain women to shame men who are dating women that are like four years younger than them, right? So like if you're, uh, I don't know, 26 and you're dating a, a woman that's 22, I mean, you consent, she consents, uh, but the hag doesn't, right? And the hag has a Twitter account and, and uh, she's trying to shame the man saying, oh my God, that is so weird, that is so disgusting and that is so gross. Yeah, I, I'm sure his ego takes a big hit from those insults, uh, especially when his younger wife tells him that uh, she loves him. But, but this is the essence, this is the core of the problem. And no one wants to talk about it. And when I talked about it, I got called an incel. And I, and I got called a misogynistic pig. But I will talk about it nonetheless, okay? This is why young men are turning to AI. And I don't think it's just young men, I think it's women as well. But since the progressive rags want to remain politically correct, they can't say anything negative about women, so they can just bash on men a few times more because it's easy, right? So, so what is the core problem? Well, when a man becomes 18 years of age, he realizes that it's very difficult to fit in life and that he is not wanted. It's difficult for him to get a job. The school system doesn't teach you how to write a resume, how to forward the letter of intention, how to start a business, how to pay your taxes. It, it teaches you jack shit, right? So you have to figure all these things out for yourself. You're probably still living with your parents, 
Not because you want to, but because you don't have the money to move out. It's also very difficult to get a car, especially when the government keeps taxing it and they're coming up with new taxes every year. And due to that, you notice that women your age aren't interested in dating you. They're dating older guys. So when you're 18, other 18-year-old girls, they're dating 25, 26-year-olds, right? And, and those people have their stuff together. But, but those older men do not spring from the ether. They, they do not sprout from the mountain. No, they used to be 18-year-olds as well. And when they were 18, they wanted to do certain things that teenagers do, like walk into the park, play video games, do, do all the things that young men do. But they also got rejected. However, some of them managed to get their life in order, managed to get a stable job, a career, they got a car, they moved out, they don't live with their parents anymore. And all of a sudden, women their age are turning their heads and they're like, wow, you know, this is a good husbando. Unfortunately for them, the good husbando is looking to the 18-year-old supermodel because he can do things with her that women his age can't. Women his age don't have time to go to the park and, and have like a romantic evening. They already did that when they were teenagers. Meanwhile, the man didn't. He missed out on that and he wants to do it, right? So, so what ends up happening is that he's going to, to go with the younger woman and the woman his age is going to be upset. And, and, and she's going to go on Twitter and she's going to complain and she's going to be like, oh my God, why are all the men my age? I, this is the cycle, right? It takes two to tango. It, it's not like one person is guilty and the other one isn't. And the question many men are going to ask is like, what a 25-year-old woman can offer me that a 20-year-old one cannot, right? So so they don't have an answer to that, so they're bitter and, and vengeful. But, but I, I will tell you this. When you're 18, and this is not just me talking, this is experiencing what my friends went through, when, when, when you're 18, unless you have like a rich daddy that can pour money into you, if, if you come from like a modest family and, and you don't have like the latest generation of iPhone that, that has like an impeccable screen and not a single crack on it, um, you're going to find a very difficult time in dating. And because of that, you're going to feel unwanted. You're, you're going to feel depressed. So is it a wonder that these men are turning to chatbots or the internet or video games? Or if you wouldn't even have all of those things, they would probably sit at home watching TV. I mean, my generation, which grew up without a computer, like many of us didn't have one. Do you know what they did? They would sit in their house nonstop listening to music. Like you had a Walkman, it was called. And you had like headphones from dust till fucking down. This idea that, oh my God, men are shutting themselves out from society is not a new concept. The technology advances and it's a lot more easy to get shut down, sure. But I'm telling you, when I grew up, people were shut ins as well. They just did different activities. They would read books and not just like any type of good books. No, they would read like sci-fi novels and shit. Right, so, so <clears throat> the, the problem isn't the AI. The problem isn't the, the, oh my God, like men are socially isolated. No, the problem is the fact that when you're 18, you don't feel wanted. The school doesn't teach you how to get a job. The school doesn't teach you how to write a resume. The school doesn't do shit. So, so you end up being unwanted and, and that you internalize that. And, and it takes time to get your shit together. No one is helping you. And some men can figure it faster than others. Other men can't figure it out at all. But... Once they do figure it out, they miss the things that they could have done that, that other girls were doing when they were their age, right? So, like, there are certain things that, that men want to do when they're 18. They, they want to go in the mall and have an ice cream with, with their girlfriend. They, they want to hold hands and walk in the park. You know, like, like, shit like this that doesn't even get to be brought up. Meanwhile, the women their age, they already did that. They're already bored of that. They, they find, ugh. So is it a surprise that they choose to date younger or that they choose to spend time with their AI waifu? Right? If you want to fix it, banning the AI waifu isn't the solution. The solution is a much more complex and difficult problem that doesn't just have one single answer. And going back to Twitter and why I even made the video and why I got called an incel, right? like this was interesting, right? Um, I said that the solution is that if you're a woman, when you're 18, you find another man your age or close to your age. 
you get together, you have a relationship, and you grow old together. You get married, you grow old together, and then you're going to be with a person that's your age. Immediately, I got called an insult for saying that, for suggesting that. It's like, oh my god, you're, you're so answered. You're answered that no one wants you. And I was like, well, yeah, when I was 18, no one wanted me, but now I'm married, I'm happy, right? Ah, uh, you probably got a wife that's a sex jurist. You know, like, <clears throat> it's not that it insults me, the fact that they thought that I'm an American. Like, Romania doesn't even have that type of industry. Who, who wants to come here? But, but the idea is that these people are so bitter. They, and when you provide a solution to them, a potential solution that may help some people, they are so disgusted by the concept that other people may not be as miserable as they are that it triggers this animosity. It triggers the, the, this, you know, attempt to try and hurt the other person through any means you can. Uh, and that's what I genuinely found to be sad. It's like, wh why are you behaving like this? You know, like nothing that I said is controversial. Nothing that I said is evil. Nothing that I said, is, is, right? But for some reason, like, what can you do? This is not just the culture, but you have, like, these cultural defenders that prevent the culture from changing. Like, when you have someone like me that's offering a different solution and is saying, hey, you know, like, why why not grow all together with someone? You know, get married. Like, your grandparents did this. Ah, oh, I'm a misogynistic pig. And it's like, okay, you know, like, I mean, I'm not the one complaining about it.